We're going to have a look at what's grabbing uh, headlines here in France now. Lots of focus on that major demonstration we've been uh, talking about for the last uh, few weeks, really, now. It's scheduled for tomorrow, uh, isn't it, Flo? Across the country, uh, people are going to take to the streets to protest uh, against the government's uh, new planned labour law reform. That's right, and you just got a sneak peek at the front page of L'Humanité, the communist paper, a real rallying cry trying to get people to come out into the streets tomorrow to demonstrate against this planned reform. If we can take a look at it again, it says, against the labor code, everybody take to the streets. Now, this planned reform was presented to MPs yesterday and part of France's trade unions, including the biggest CGT trade unions, say it's not in favor of workers. It's going to be bad for workers. This despite the government's efforts to water down this planned reform. What you can see here is the editorial of Humanité that just isn't buying the government's efforts to make tweaks and changes to this reform to make it acceptable for workers. It actually accuses the government of trying to trick people by making these cosmetic changes. To quote uh, the editorial of Humanité, it says that the Prime Minister, Manuel Valls, he actually didn't really change the core of the bill, uh, and the, the bill itself is outrageous and backwards, according to L'Humanité, which, remember, is the communist paper. Yes, exactly. Demonstrations are, of course, uh, quite common here in France. But what is particular about this one, isn't it, Flo, is that student uh, unions have joined in with workers' unions. That's right. High school and college students have been staging protests for weeks now against this planned reform. They say they're worried uh, about what this reform will, will mean for their future, uh, essentially a job uncertainty. But what's interesting is to despite this uncertainty, uh, young people have a lot of hope. And this is a, a fascinating poll that's been carried out in La Croix, the Catholic paper today. It's about 18 to 25 year olds and how they view the world around them and their future. And you can see here the, the title of this article that says that facing an uncertain future, uh, young people are confident. In fact, 73% uh, of young people in this poll say that they feel well integrated into French society. 62% of them say they feel confident about the year to come, uh, and 56% of them say they're confident about the next 10 years. So that's pretty wow, good. I'm quite surprised. Uh, <laughs> quite surprising yeah. as well. Also, what's interesting uh, is they're pretty trusting of the business world. Uh, they have 53% uh, of them have confidence in business leaders, and they're also trusting of trade unions. It's, uh, it's quite unusual for people to trust yeah. both of them. 50% of young people trust trade unions. Now, that's quite a contrast to 30% of adults who trust uh, trade, <laughs> trade unions. Now, there is a slight, a slight uh, caveat, I guess you could say, is that 83% of young people do think it's harder to find a job these days than it was 20 years ago. Mm. But what's interesting is, and Lacroix says that uh, this, this kind of hope that we're seeing in young people is proof that we don't really have a lost generation here in France uh, compared to, say, countries like uh, Spain or Greece, where about one in two young people have, have been affected by unemployment. OK, the youth are confident. What about the government? Are they um, standing strong here? That's right. The finance minister, Michel Sapin, despite all these protests, is is defending the government and uh, the government's track record. He gives a very lengthy interview here in Liberation. He talks about all sorts of things, uh, but he does uh, talk about the rising anger that we're seeing amongst the, uh, the left wing. Essentially, a lot of people in the left wing think the government isn't being socialist enough, isn't being left wing enough. Well, uh, Sapin says that he wants to shatter this wall of skepticism amongst the left. And he does say that it's time for the president to make a little effort uh, and to highlight the leftist values that are actually at the core of everything he's done since he was elected in 2012, despite what a lot of people think. Uh, and he says that François Hollande still is the best candidate for the left wing. And other papers are uh, wondering as well what actually lies ahead for the left wing. That's right. This is a fascinating article in Slate. Now, 18 to 25-year-olds might face an uncertain future, but so does the left wing, mm. according to Slate. Uh, and Slate wonders whether political environmentalism could be the future of left-wing politics in France, because essentially currently you have the Green Party in France, which has kind of imploded. It's kind of been sucked into the vortex of the Socialist Party, which itself is struggling to demarcate itself from the right wing when it comes to the uh, economy or even security issues. So perhaps the environment is the area where the left wing can really make itself make, make a difference, show that it's a different party. Uh, and it's a hot-button political issue that keeps coming into the political landscape. So perhaps that's where the left wing's future lies.
Going to move now from environmental issues to nuclear issues. This is the uh, former head of the French nuclear giant uh, Arriva. He's been biting back in the press. That's right. This is Anne Louvergeon. Uh, she's known as Atomic Anne here in France. <laughs> uh, and she's come out swinging in the press today. She's been silent for about a year now. Uh, and she comes back on her past, essentially, her business past. She, was, she says she was made into a scapegoat after a string of scandals that cost Arriva 20, uh, excuse me, not that much, 2 billion <laughs> euros, and ultimately led to her being fired in 2011. Well, she says that she was just made into a, a scapegoat, uh, blamed for dismantling the group that she, after all, uh, created. And she can, she says she was stunned by the violence uh, that, that was uh, essentially addressed at her uh, in the wake of that scandal. And another big boss is in the hot seat as well. This is the CEO of PSA, Peugeot Citroën. I mentioned this in the business news. It's incredible, yeah, isn't it? It's incredible. This is Carlos uh, Tavares, he decided to give himself a raise, uh, mm. and quite a big one. He, a couple of euros. A couple of euros. Yeah. He doubled uh, his salary, essentially. Five million a year. <laughs> uh, so you can see Nouvelle Ups wondering, is he lucky or just talented? Yeah. Uh, now, he actually drew praise initially for propping up the group's finances last year, uh, but this treat that he gave himself is raising some eyebrows, mm. including uh, within the government, which is a major shareholder in the group. Now, Lups points out that he's not the first big business fat cat mm. to have an outrageous salary that's kind of disproportionate to that of his employees. And, and the article points out that PSA employees got a 2,000 euro uh, bonus because of uh, the fact that the company re returned to profit. But Almost it kind the of, same. Yeah, it kind of pales in comparison to the yeah. 2.5 million that he gave himself. Okay, thank you very much, Flo.